So you, you guys might have heard about Iran finally doing something. And the worst part about that, Iran finally doing something, is clearly they were able to launch precise strikes on Israeli military infrastructure, and they were able to actually get the missiles to get through the Iron Dome and land. And everyone's celebrating that, and all that I can think of watching it is, wow, they could have done this the whole time. They've been sitting on this the whole time, but they just don't do it. They could launch precise strikes on basically every single military installation in Israel that they have intelligence on, get through the Iron Dome with whatever it is that they use to get through it, like they landed so dozens, dozens, probably hundreds of missiles actually landed. They could do that whenever they want, but they don't. The problem isn't that they launch it. It's, it's like the, the, the victim narrative immediately following that was so funny, by the way. At Israel, the official Israel account of the state of Israel. This isn't normal. Every single one of these rockets is meant to kill. The state of Israel. This isn't not. It's not. So it's wait. It's not actually not normal to be bombed. I thought it was normal, and that's why you do it to people every single day for the last year. That's why you've killed at least like 100,000 people by estimates or 40,000 people who are confirmed. Are you sure this isn't normal? This isn't the state of Israel. This isn't normal. Suddenly you're the victim. The victimhood narrative is absolutely f***ing insane. Like the strategic playing of the victim is crazy. There was another tweet too of like some Israeli guy who called it an attempted genocide. Like the narrative is crazy. On one hand, there were people who called the, what was very clearly a pre uh, rather precise attack on military bases an attempted genocide. There was one, one civilian who died. One. And Israel did not release anything about the military casualties. They said nothing about them. So we have no way of knowing how many actual, like the damage to military installations, the deaths of military personnel, we have no way of knowing Israel will never release that information. But only one civilian was killed in a launch of like thousands of missiles. So that was a pretty rather successful attack. And variously, the, the narrative was, and I shit you not, there were people calling this an attempted genocide. And then on the other hand, like the, the wishy-washy, I don't support Israel, but the, the pa I hate that Palestinian resistance so much, man. Those sort of people were saying like, oh my God, the evil Iranian regime, they only, ki they killed one, one guy. What is, what a, uh, uh, their attack wasn't even successful. They killed one guy and um, he was a Palestinian citizen of Israel. It was the narrative they were going with. It's like, what a failed attack. Because they have, they are so used to like gorging success by Israel standards, which is how many random civilians am I killing, that they believe that an attack is failed, an attack on military infrastructure is a failure because it didn't kill enough civilians. There were tons of posts of people saying shit like that, like, "Oh my God, Iran, you only killed one civilian. Wow, yeah, you're so weak or whatever." Like. And they were all like mocking it, like the people who the, these people are celebrating this attack on Israel when they only killed one civilian, when and and the, and the one civilian they killed happened to be a Palestinian because they don't understand that for most people the goal isn't to kill civilians. So when they see a country like Iran, which according to them is like evil and just wants to randomly kill people for no reason whatsoever or because they're anti-Semitic, of course, launching what is an actual attack on military infrastructure, they see it as a failure. They literally cannot comprehend. That maybe their narrative is wrong, that maybe their way of assessing things is wrong. And I mean, what if they had launched an attack on like, on like just randomly blowing, launching missiles on Tel Aviv? You know, I'm just saying, Dresden, Dresden. But if they had done that and they had killed a bunch of civilians, they would be like, this is a second holocaust, this is a genocide, so what's the standard here? Do you want them to, to not kill civilians or do you want them to kill civilians? Which, which, what is your preference? Obviously for them, the issue is the resistance at all. They, tr they immediately try to find issues with it. The issue is that anyone fights back against Israel. That's the, the, the only issue, the only problem they have. And everything that they do is just a way for them to avoid, like, outright saying what they really believe. But the, overall, the attack was an enormous success, made the Iron Dome look like a f***ing joke. And the worst thing about it is that Iran can do this whenever they want. They could have been doing this for a year, and they haven't done it. Iran could force Israel into submission. They could force Israel to leave Gaza whenever they f***ing want, and they don't do it. And we cannot talk about this without also laughing at one of these f***ing idiots, which is Lona Box, who had a five-hour stream crying about how Iran was committing war crimes by attacking Israel. This is someone, this is someone who, for a year at this point, has been... Ex 
explaining to us how actually Israel isn't committing war crimes in Gaza. Actually, Israel isn't doing indiscriminate attacks in Gaza. Actually, there's no genocide in Gaza. And the second that there is retaliation against Israel that is actually aimed specifically at military infrastructure, we have no aim whatsoever to hurt any, any civilians or anything. He goes live and complains about it for five fucking hours and specifically claims that it is they are war crimes and they are indiscriminate attacks. I shit you not. This is someone who for years and still now tries to frame himself as like the only true advocate for Palestine. And basically, he desperately tries to find some sort of issue with any sort of resistance to Israel whatsoever. And he desperately tries to justify anything that Israel does whatsoever. That people like this claim to be pro-resistance. I, I don't even fucking get it, man. How does anyone believe that? But either way, just look at the glory of this. Look at the glory of this fucking idiot embarrass himself once more. Uh, Iranian ballistics are not are not precision guided they can point in a general direction but you still have like what the fuck dude if they're not precision guided if they cannot choose specific targets how did they do that how how exactly did they specifically target him? like what the fuck are you does he think that iran is like making missiles out of like fucking pipes like hamas has to do we're talking about a major regional military power what the hell are you talking about dude this is someone who, by the way, defends Israeli the Israeli use of massive dumb bombs in Gaza specifically. Oh my god. Just added that word in directly. Uh, Iranian ballistics are not, are not precision guided. They can point in a general direction, but you still have like a sort of like a kilometer radius of error. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because definitionally, an indiscriminate strike, even if they got lucky and only hit military targets, that would still be a, that would still be indiscriminate because their weapons can't aim properly. That's so incredible. Their weapons cannot aim properly, yet you have evidence before you where they just launch hundreds of missiles that very clearly aimed properly, given the complete lack of civilian casualties and damage caused to civilian targets relatively. Now, this guy looks at Israel flat out flattening all of Gaza and apparently, like, like these people do not understand anything. They, they don't understand the meaning of, like, inference. For them, what matters is, like, everything beforehand, not after. Like, here's, here's something, you know, a, a magical thing to blow your fucking mind. You can infer whether something was indiscriminate or not by its result. You can actually do that. And you can infer whether something is an indiscriminate attack or not by the fact that they launched thousands of missiles and only killed one fucking civilian and clearly landed hits on massive amounts of military infrastructure, which Israel is obviously never going to reveal how much damage they actually did. His own fucking argument here disproves him because he's like, Israel doesn't launch indiscriminate attacks. Okay, while, also, while he also argues that Iran did launch an indiscriminate attack, Okay, so let's compare the two. Let's compare the fucking results of the two then. How is it possible that the one that you think is indiscriminate killed one civilian? And the one that you think is discriminate, by any any reasonable assessment of the actual ratio of civilian to combatant casualties, like fucking 1 to 10, 1 to 9, 1 to 8 maybe if they're very lucky. How does that work exactly? Obviously, it's a desire to justify Israel no matter what, and to attack anyone who actually does anything effective against Israel no matter what. This guy, this guy is just a fucking Zionist. He's a straight up Nazi Zionist. And I'll tell you, he should stay away from Celtic fans. These people were also complaining about, like, um, Hezbollah launching missiles at the Mossad headquarters. These people who claim that Hamas uses human shields are um, suddenly against an attack on a clearly military installation because it's surrounded by civilian buildings. And if we, like, think about the consequences of what he says there as well, like, it's not, it's not really on Iran because Iran can clearly prove that they are able to launch missiles at military military targets very precisely which is precisely what they did and also get through the iron dome think about the consequences of what he said you are only allowed according to him you're only allowed to launch attacks to launch any sort of retaliation against those who are attacking you if you have access to incredibly high levels of technology and incredibly expensive weaponry that can make incredibly precise attacks so basically he is denying any sort of capacity to resistance to anything aside from like the the richest of the the military powers in the world or in in all likelihood those who are western backed so basically what he's saying is de facto if you are a resistance group if you are colonized people if you are fighting imperialism and you don't have the resources that they are attacking you with you by by proxy are not allowed to retaliate if you don't have access to precise like laser guided military weapons you are not allowed 
to retaliate. That's what these people always say, like, I denounce uh, Hamas rocket attacks uh, because they are indiscriminate, because by their very nature they, they cannot be precise. Okay, give them precise weaponry then. Oh, you're against that too, aren't you? You think they, they, wouldn't they wouldn't prefer to kill IDF soldiers if they had the choice? Of course they would. But the fact of the matter is either you sit there, you take the bombings, and you do nothing in return, or you fire what you have available to you back at them. And if you don't do that, all that you're doing is, is showing them that they can bomb you with impunity without getting anything in return. And international law was specifically set up to make it so that resistance groups who do not have access to the same level of resources as state, especially like western back states do, it's specifically designed to make it so that they effectively are not able to retaliate in ways that do not technically violate international law. And the fact of the matter is, if you, if you propose giving those groups anything, they would be against it, obviously. The people who claim that they are, you know, I'm against the Palestinian resistance, because I don't like the, the missiles, the, they, they launch indiscriminate missiles or whatever. They would always be against it if they were launching discriminate missiles anyway. They're just against Palestinian resistance. They're not against, they're not against the methods, they're not against the ideology. They are against the resistance in general. They are for Israel and they're against anyone who's against it. That's all there is to it. But anyway, I denounce Iran for not doing everything they can to stop the genocide in Palestine. I denounce Iran for doing a fraction of what they could do showing us they could have done it the entire time, yet only doing it now, and only doing it for one day. They have shown us that they are able to precisely target Israeli military targets, that they are able to get through the Iron Dome, which has been, at this point has been proven useless against anything except, like, missiles made out of tubes, yet they haven't done it. The only reason they did anything is because their own guys were attacked, basically. They only take action to, to defend their own interests. Disgusting. The one actor in, in this arrangement who really has the power to stand up to Israel refuses to do it.